Hey there guys and welcome to the second installment of building the perfect defense account. In this episode I'll cover many of the fundamentals of the build and what to tackle after you've reached 45 defense, dropping the potential to inflict damage to absolutely zero under the provisions that you don't make any mistakes. First off, we'll finish up with 65 woodcutting in preparation for Fossil Island Silicep Trees, which are one of the fastest methods for obtaining fossils for the museum. During this segment I'll briefly summarise Silicep Tree Running to give you guys a bit of an understanding of the method, but I won't go into full depth until the following episode, as I like to go into different setups and methods that can be more complex than others. First off, you want to unlock all the teleports around the island, which for the most part all have great individual skilling benefits, but is also extremely important for quick silly sep tree running. This is more or less what you want your inventory to look like, and don't worry about anti-poison as your Guthix restores are in fact a cure. In the task form, you can cycle through 6 sets of trees in one particular order, then teleport back to the start where you can place 9 mushrooms on a spring mat to cushion your landing, which can be set up at the beginning of the run. The main problem you'll run into as a 10hp account is a level 132 tar monsters. With a max hit of 11, you'll either need to tick eat or heal over your HP with a Guthix restore. By utilizing this method, you should receive 78 woodcutting and subsequently 57 to 58 defense from around level 45, which can be achieved within the day. Now moving on to the rest of the video, I managed to achieve 98 cooking from AFK Monkfish while working on other future videos. I will also be capping my stats at 98 to make way for Untrim Slayer in the future. For those of you who have seen my previous videos, you know that I'm an avid collector of useless quest items that I'll never actually touch, and here are just a number of them. Now, moving on to one of the more important segments of the video, Slayer. There is one key item that defense viewers have the ability to use that is so significant to the build that it unlocks boundless opportunity that you couldn't even imagine. And that item is the Ranger Hat, and if you really want to be technical about it, you can also mention the Healer Hat, which has the same effect. The effect I'm referring to is the negative 5 crush bonus, pushing you to negative 65 giving you the ability to hit 0 indefinitely, which also means that you can utilize Partner Slayer to the fullest potential, as you don't risk any hit points experience. To explain how I'm slaying in the footage below I'd first like to list the basic fundamentals of the attack triangle, to help break down and clarify how I'm actually receiving experience in the first place. Mage and range attacks are considered a projectile motion that calculates the damage before inflicting the opponent, whereas melee is calculated as a weapon makes contact with the opponent, with slight variation around player identification or PID in PvP situations. On screen below I'll display a kill credit in slow mo so those who want to replicate these actions can refer to this as a quick guide. Thanks to RS Mobile I decided to take advantage of Cast Wars by leaving my phone in my pocket on the job and setting a vibration every 4 minutes and 50 seconds so I could touch the screen to stay logged in. And after a few weeks of absolutely nothing, I finally received my golden Cast Wars armor. As I said before guys, don't play hard, play smart. Now, back to the task at hand, by using 9 Terial tasks in the 10th Gerudel, you'll receive your Slayer Helm within 50 tasks, which took me less than 8 hours to achieve. Moving on to the more experimental segment of the video, Nightmare Zone, which may seem to be impossible due to the lack of monsters that you can receive in your restricted pool. However, after a bit of research I threw together a half-assed method that could use some heavy refinement. The issue I ran into with the method below is that I fell short with melee monsters I could pull in a nightmare, therefore I had to rely on my reactions to Tiki when the Corsair boss spawns, making the method extremely unreliable for most. All until I came across the Ascent of Arceus, one of the most recent quests released on the 10th of January 2019. The Ascent of Arceus unlocks another melee boss that can only max a 4, which makes our new method extremely viable. On screen below I'll now display your boss log that you'll require which also works for skillers. 
You may be wondering about Agrith Nair as he attacks with both Mage and Melee, however that's not the case during an easy rumble, as they actually have two separate identities. Thankfully, the easy version cannot mage you, giving you another multi-tile melee only boss completing the entire set. And finally, by utilizing this method you're looking at upwards of 50,000 points an hour. Moving on to the flippers, adding an additional negative 2 bonus to the arsenal, tied in with a nice fashion scape. I did showcase this method in my previous video, however I will slow it down and minimize mistakes and so you can understand the setup properly. Now there's actually more to this clip than meets the eye. If you haven't already noticed, I'm actually negative 65 crush bonus, and I'll tell you why. Recently, Jagex had a game integrity update based off Iron Man alt aggression through the cannon at negative 65 bonus, always granting a zero hit splat, resulting in faster clumping, therefore faster experience. The update then resulted in the cannon having a slight chance of hitting a 1, which had the intentions of negating heavy experience gain on Iron Man as it challenged the integrity of the game mode, and rightfully so. What wasn't foreseen was that you could actually do this during a spawn manipulation, having a 1 in 4 chance of hitting an NPC regardless of the NPC's stats or your stats, making just about any boss in the game practical to kill without the risk of any experience gain. To truly perfect the fashion scape, I had to finish off the mining gloves to mesh with the Castle Wars armor, which took me around 5 to 6 hours to gather the 60 nuggets. First, we finish off Gertrude's cat, then kick on with the final and most difficult segment of the video, Mitch Laren's Little Helper. The difficulty with this particular quest is that it has two of the hardest bosses in the game for these particular builds. The first boss is randomly generated by rolling one out of the four possible bosses which are predetermined through player identification on account creation. You can spawn manipulate any one of these NPCs, however you can't inflict damage within the first game tick, which unfortunately means that this is one of three NPCs we're going to have to gain two range experience on. It also seems that the negative 65 crush manipulation can't be implemented on certain NPCs, unfortunately this one included, which means we could be risking extra experience on the off chance that this guy regenerates health. And finally, onto the final and hardest boss of the episode, also props to BEA5 for figuring out the remote force spawn. Upon entry you want to render the possessed priest by entering the door then quickly auto hop to enact the remote force despawn. After you hop, preset your cannon in a world of your choosing, then load the cannon, fire, and during the same tick, click the tile in front of the door and open an interface simultaneously. Be extremely attentive, because this can happen. The possessed priest can spawn wherever it likes on the eastern side of the room. If it spawns too far to the southeast, your cannon can miss the manipulation, causing a very high chance of gaining combat experience. And finally, that concludes today's video. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the content, make sure to drop me a like and a subscription. Also, consider following my Twitter at MaulerOSRS for sneak peeks and game finds. Furthermore, to those who have extensive knowledge of the Chambers of Xerak and are also keen to give me a helping hand on the following video, find me at LimitedCC where I can brief you on the plan. And without further ado guys, take it easy and have a wonderful day.